But what I've noticed about some women is that sometimes we forget who we are, right? So since maybe you have forgotten who the heck you are, but I want to remind you that you've always been a go-getter. You've always been the person who was willing to put in the work. And for all of you all who are listening to this, if you've forgotten who you are, snap back into it. Hey, best friends. This episode is brought to you by Holistic, your favorite plant-based feminine care and beauty care brand brought to you by the women. If you have not checked it out, make sure you visit www.shopholistic.com and use code self-care to get 15% off. See you soon. It's the girl CEO show. Run it up. Always on the grind. You already know what's up. Everything from day Hey, best friends. Welcome to the Girl CEO Show. So this by far is one of my favorite segments because it gives our listeners and our viewers an opportunity to ask questions, submit them in, and I answer them real, raw, and I cut. We call this the Real Talk with Ronnie B segment. So let's jump in and have some fun. All right. So our first question is from Natasha8755 on Instagram. Thank you for tuning in, Natasha, and being a viewer. This question is, Ronnie, if all you had was $3,000 to your name, what would you do? How would you use it? You know, this is a really good question uh, because, you know, we are kind of like in a place where so many entrepreneurs are kind of like jumping out there. Uh, many of you guys are hustling on the side. You're working a nine to five. You're kind of working your business on the side and you're trying to figure some things out. So if I had $3,000 to my name, what would I do first? Well, the first thing that I would do is I would start filming and documenting myself. And I know you probably think I was going to say, go buy a camera, I'll go buy some fancy equipment. But the answer is no. I will whip out my cell phone. And the first thing I would do is I would literally announce to the world that I have $3,000 that I'm trying to build a brand with. And I would invite them in on the journey to watch me grow this thing out. The second thing I would do is I would figure out what my product is going to be that I'm going to sell. I would make sure it was a lightweight product. Um, it was something that was like highly in demand, something that did not weigh a lot because shipping costs are very expensive. But I believe that products and things that people are going to get on a consistent basis are always the way. All right. Something that is a solution to someone's problem, um, something that people will buy on a consistent basis, and then I will start building out a company around that. I would also think about some sort of service that I could offer, right? Let me just say this. We are in a place now where people will watch you do your hair. People will watch you do your edges. People will watch you check emails. It's really weird out here, but I feel like it's a super good thing because you can literally make money just being yourself. So I would then think of a service, you know, what problem can I solve? There are people who just want someone to listen. I believe that you can make money right now just listening to someone's problems. I remember, you know, listening to one of my friends one time and she was like going through some stuff. And then I wanted to give her some feedback and she was like, okay, so... This is one of those moments where I don't really want any feedback. I just need you to listen. And I was like, dang, like people don't tell you stuff because they want your opinion or they want your feedback. And she's like, no, like I don't want your opinion. I don't want you to give me any feedback. I just need an ear. So one of the creative businesses that I would probably kick off is like, just listening, like want someone to listen and not give any feedback. Hey, this is a service or just jump into something that you're good at, something that people have told you that you're really good at and monetize that. That is what I would start doing with my first $3,000. I would look up, you know, a product, like I said, something that's really lightweight, wholesale, resell it, something that is really trendy right now that people are enjoying, that people are going to buy on a consistent basis. And I would immediately monetize that. All right. $3,000. That would be my start. I would be taking my cell phone everywhere I go. You know, someone who really killed it in that way was 100% wallow. You know, he came home with nothing and used his cell phone to build an entire brand. No fancy cameras, 
no fancy equipment, no digital team, just whipping out that phone, telling a story, taking people on the journey every day. And that just goes to show that, yes, that works. So that is what I would do for my first $3,000, okay? Next question is from Rashonda DM on Instagram. Thanks for listening, Rashonda. I appreciate it. But her question is, do you think that building a personal brand before your business brand is really important? So Rashonda, I get this question a lot because everyone wants to argue, do I need a personal brand? You know, a lot of people do not want to be in front of the camera. They don't want their face to be, you know, in the forefront. For those who are open to creating the personal brand and having the business brand, and you're like, what do I really just need the personal, personal brand? My response is yes, yes, and yes. You know, we sometimes forget that we are also consumers, right? How many of you all are consumers? Everybody that's watching this, you're a consumer, right? So think about this. How often do you just follow a company and engage with their page? There's no face connected. There is no person uh, there. They're just a logo. And you're just constantly commenting, constantly following. Are you watching their stories? Like, are you tuning into their stories? Ask yourself that. And then I want you to think about your favorite people online, your, your favorite personal brands meaning people who are running their social medias themselves. They're showing behind the scenes of their days. Some of them are doing home tours. You know, some of them are taking you out to eat with them. They're dancing. They're having a good time. They're teaching you something. Your connection with those personal brands, I can almost guarantee you that they are a little more stronger than with just a company. So my answer to you, Rashonda, is 100% yes, yes, yes. Focus on your personal brand. You know, something that I tell a lot of business owners is that you want to use the personal brand to build a relationship. And then you can slide your audience over to your business, your product, your service, whatever it is that you're offering. And people are more likely to just kind of go with what you're offering and support your business when they feel that connection with you. You know, I always use this and I say this a lot. So write this down, you guys. But building a relationship with your customer is just like dating. Ladies, we want consistency, right? When a guy is trying to pursue you, you want them to be consistent. When someone is trying to, you know, get to know you, you want to see them. You want to get to know them. You want to see how they think. You want to see what they believe in. You want to hear their standards. Are they the type of person that believes in some of the same things that you believe in, right? This is the same thing when it comes to the people that you are selling to. There are so many customers who have changed their way of thinking and they want to know who is the owner of this company? Like, what does she believe in? What does she stand for? And they want to feel connected so my response would have to be yes, sis. And I know it's hard because right now, you know, some people, they're just not into being the face of the company. And I'm not telling you that you have to be the face of it. But what I am telling you is that personal brand is super important. And I think that companies grow faster when there is a personal brand connected to it. All right. Next question is from Glamorous.star on Instagram. Thanks for viewing, Glamorous. <laughs> All right, next question is, how do you ignore the distractions and focus on your business? Let me just tell you something. I have been an entrepreneur for over 13 years. And the truth is the distractions never stop. So you are gonna have to get to a place where you are okay with jumping the hurdles. You are going to jump hurdles as long as you are in business. You guys will not believe. When I say believe, best friends, I mean believe. You would not believe some of the stuff that I've gone through in my personal life. And I've had to continue to get up, continue to build, continue to work with my team, you know, continue to support my staff in the midst of all of that. You know, the crazy thing about entrepreneurship is that no one gives us a manual for all of the stuff 
that you deal with, the emotional stuff, right? The letdowns, uh, the betrayal, the people, you know, who decide they don't want to do certain things anymore. Um, you having to rebrand, pivot, go in a different direction. These are just all of the things that we experience. So the distractions will come. Um, it's not about avoiding distractions in business. It's really learning how to face them, overcome them, conquer them, and keep on pushing. So glamorous, my response to you is that you get used to them, right? You accept them, you embrace them, you overcome them, and you keep focusing on your business. You know, I used to tell a lot of my mentees, life happens, right? You have things that go wrong. You have death in your family. But I, I remember saying, have you ever gone to a Starbucks and, it, and you saw a sign on the door that says like, I'm having a bad day or, you know, out for a family emergency or, you know, someone passed in the family. You don't really see that. You don't see that. And one of the things that I strive to do is to build my companies up in a way that, I can still enjoy my personal life. Y'all know I'm all about the soft life, right? And I don't think that I could have gotten there without a team and without automation. So what I will tell you is that don't focus on the distractions. I want you to focus on getting mentally strong and getting to a place where you're like, okay, you know, obstacles are coming, but I will continue to persevere. All right. Thank you so much for that question. I absolutely love it. Next question is from the Olivia Home Collection on Instagram. Thank you guys for listening. This question is, Ronnie, if you could rewind the clock, what would you have done differently? You know, I would, I would definitely say that if I could take the clock back, I would have had a little more fun. <laughs> you know, I was a mom young. So, you know, I was a young mom and everything was just so serious so quickly because when you decide to be a parent, you got to get serious. You got to take care of your responsibilities and you have to rise up, you know, but at 60 years old, I was super immature and I became a mom and I had to step into this role and I really didn't have a lot of time to have fun and be a kid. So what I would say is that I would have started to have a little fun, a little more fun um, if I could go back in time. Now, on a business note, you know, Ronnie, what would you have done differently? Hmm. I would probably say that I would have really positioned myself um, a little better to start learning more things about business sooner. You know, it's so crazy how when we grow up, we are just kind of taught to be excited about potentially getting this job offer, you know, or working at this big firm or becoming a doctor or a lawyer, or whatever it is that your parents told you was the coolest thing that you could do that would make you a lot of money. But no one really talked to me about entrepreneurship. No one talked to me about owning a business. And when I started to get into business and I started to make money, I was just thinking like, wow, how would my life have been if I would have known about entrepreneurship sooner? It would have been a lot different. So with that being said, if you know I could do it all over again and I could rewind the clock, I would have really focused on information. Information that could position me to be you know, a business owner, that uh, information that could position me to have more time freedom. Uh, that just wasn't my focus. When I was growing up, I was so focused on just getting that job, um, filling out those applications, getting someone to call me in for that interview. Um, I was so routine and everything. And back then, I wish I would have stepped outside the box, okay? Another thing that I would say when it comes to me doing things differently, if I could reward wind the clock, I would have taken more risks. Like, let me just say this. I played it safe for a very long time. How many of you all play it safe? All right. We are so afraid. We are doing the things that we are most comfortable with. So we don't step outside the box. You know, I remember thinking, oh, I can't leave my job. You know, I'm a mom. What if I fail? What if people don't buy my products? What if people don't even want to work with me? Like, what am I going to do? And sometimes your subconscious mind and those thoughts 
you are saying things that actually become your reality. And you don't realize that when you're speaking that stuff to yourself, you begin to act on it, right? And when I say act on it, I mean, you begin to operate as if it's true, where it's really not even true. It's not reality, okay? So you start moving as if no one's going to buy your product. You start moving as if no one wants to buy your product, all right? You start moving as if your business is failing because you're telling yourself, oh my gosh, this, this is going to fail. No one is going to buy this from me. And you start thinking that way, okay? So I would have taken more risks, you know? Now I sit back and I'm like, man, some of the most successful ventures that I have going on, it came from me just simply taking a risk, taking a leap doing something completely out of the box. Heck, this show <laughs> was a leap for me. You guys know I started this in my office, just doing like Instagram lives with my audience and then really realizing that people wanted this. They were tuning in. You know, they were listening at their jobs. They were listening in the car. I had no intentions of this becoming what it is today. But guess what? I did it anyway. I just did it for fun because I wanted to connect with my audience. And today, you know, this show is insane. So many people's lives are being changed because of it. So here is your reminder to just step out on faith. When I started this show, I was literally recording this show in my house from my cell phone, just talking. Okay. Today, you know, we have our camera crews, we have an audience, we have listeners, we have viewers. The point is, what if I never would have taken that leap? Where would I be today? If I would have just said, hey, you know, I want to start this show, but what if no one listens? And because I'm telling myself, what if no one listens? What if I really acted on that as if no one would have listened? I wouldn't be here today. So for many of you all, the very thing that you're hoping to do, that you're dreaming of, that you're wishing, you know, would happen, the only thing that's standing in your way in reality, because some of you all have already told yourself that something else is in your way that's not even in your way, all right? The only thing that is really in your way is you. Once you get out of your own way, things are going to change like crazy, okay? So, really taking those leaps. I think out of every every single thing that I said, I would say really taking those risks. If I could go back, those would that would be the one thing that I would have changed because it took me so long to start believing in myself, start betting on myself, but I did not take action fast enough. This next one is from Candy Smith online. Candy, thanks for listening. Her question is, Ronnie, you know, do you have any advice for people who suffer from imposter syndrome? <sighs> Y'all, imposter syndrome is a real thing, okay? How many of us can agree with that? It's like, am I qualified? You know, can I do this? Will people take me serious? You know, what if people find out I'm a fraud. These are all of the things that so many of you all say to yourself all the time. Well, the first thing that I will say is what you believe becomes your reality. And I kind of just spoke about this, but, I, but I'm going to put a little more stretch on this. We're going we gonna to stretch this out because I feel like this is a real thing. But this imposter syndrome is when you feel like personally that you aren't qualified. And you are having this fear of people figuring out that you may potentially not be qualified. But the craziest part about this is that you start acting and moving as if you are not qualified. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you, Candy, Candy, you know, I'm going to keep it real with you, girl, is that you have to get out of your own head. All right. And when I see people dealing with this, the first thing that I start to think is why are we waiting for other people's approval? So many people are waiting for other people to co-sign on their goals. They're waiting for other people to co-sign on that dream. They're waiting for someone else to say, yeah, that business is a good business idea. Let me just stress this. Can you start trusting you more? I think that imposter syndrome 
really is rooted in lack of trust in self. And when we do not trust ourselves, we are always at a place where we are waiting for someone else to sign off on what we're doing, what we're believing, what we're working towards, and it just needs to end. You got to take that leap and you have to bet on you, Candy. Why are you struggling in the inside and why are you constantly questioning yourself? And let me take this a bit further. Candy, I remember you. Now, you've been following me for a very long time and I've, I've worked with you in the past for many years. You have that hustle inside of you. You have that grit inside of you. You've always been a very hard worker. But what I've noticed about some women is that sometimes we forget who we are, right? So since maybe you have forgotten who the heck you are, but I want to remind you that you've always been a go-getter. You've always been the person who was willing to put in the work. And for all of you all who are listening to this, if you've forgotten who you are, snap back into it. Wake up and say, okay, I'm that girl, right? I'm that person who can do this. I believe in myself. I don't need anyone else to put a stamp of approval on my name. I don't need anyone else to put a stamp of approval on my business, all right? So we need to get past the imposter syndrome by what you are feeding yourself. And let me just make another suggestion. What are you listening to? Not many people speak on this, but you have to protect your mind. And the way that we protect our mind is that we are constantly training our brain. The same way I go to the gym, because I know that I have to lift, I know that I have to work out, I know that I have to do those things. It's the same way I have to train my mind. And when I'm in a place where I'm training my mind, I'm not listening to garbage, okay? I am listening to specific things that are gonna empower me, they're gonna encourage me, they're gonna get me back to a place where I'm believing in myself, where I'm feeling like anything is possible. So what I will also suggest listeners and viewers is that you guys immediately start putting certain things on in your cars that you're listening to that's feeding you positivity, that's encouraging you, that's reassuring you, that's telling you that anything is possible. You know, I, I when I work out, sometimes I will listen to hip hop and rap music, right? But what I started to do is I started to listen to audiobooks so I can learn, so I can get empowered. So sometimes you have to check yourself on what are you feeding yourself? Because what you're feeding yourself may be the reason why you're not believing in yourself. And then another thing that I would have to say is, how is your perspective on what's going on around you? You know, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and they were like, you know, I had to deactivate Instagram. And I was like, deactivate Instagram? You're a business owner. You know, why would you be deactivating Instagram? Make this make sense to me. And I'm like, your products are on there, what your marketing is on there, you are on there, people are loving you, your customers are going to be like, where are you? Why would you deactivate your Instagram page? Well, what I did not realize is that so many people are looking at other people and watching other people succeed or watching other people's brands look like they're blowing up uh, is really, it's really affecting a lot of people. And I was having this conversation with my friend and I'm like, why is this the case? You know, I've never uh, been at a place where I've seen someone winning or I've seen someone's business thriving and I felt like I was not where I should be. And this is where perspective comes in at, right? Every single time that I've looked at someone and I've seen their business thriving and I've seen great things happening for them, I look up and I'm like, God, like, thank you, God, for giving me this vision. Thank you, God, for allowing me to see this because this is just proof as to what you can do for me. So the question is, how are you viewing other people's success? Because that could cause you to have imposter syndrome as well. Are you looking at other people's success saying, man, look at them. Their stuff looks better than mine. Man, look at their marketing. It's fire. Mine sucks. I need to step it up. Or are you looking at them saying, wow, this is so inspiring. If this woman can do this, I can do this. If this guy can do this, I can do this. It is all about your perspective. So 
when I'm telling you to train your brain and listen to things that are encouraging, make sure you're checking yourself. You got to train yourself on viewing things in a positive light. If you're looking at other people, you're going to feel the need to deactivate if it's coming from a negative space. Every single time I'm on IG, I'm on different platforms and I see people doing great things, I'm like, man, this just goes to show that there's nothing but opportunity out here. Man, this just goes to show that there's enough money out here for everybody to win. These are the things that I'm saying when I'm watching other people win. So Candy, I hope this really helps you out. Can we talk about process? Because that's like another thing that I feel like people do not talk about enough. Like thinking, sitting down, thinking about something, making that thing come to life, doing the work, going through the ups and downs, launching it, maybe it flops initially, you come back, you try it again, you know, and then can we just talk about putting it out there? And then thinking like all of your best friends are probably gonna be the people who like buy it all up. I remember when I initially started business, I was under the impression that my friends were gonna be the people who, you know, purchased my product. And it just, it wasn't that. Um, and let me kind of make sure I clarify when I say that, we think that just our circle are gonna be the people who blow our businesses up who take our businesses to the next level, right? Who sell the products out. And it's it's really, it's not their responsibility. And when I when I initially started my business, I used to be pissed. <laughs> like, they don't support me. Like, I thought they were gonna buy this. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it's the people who you know that are literally waiting to see if other people take you seriously, right? I know this sounds crazy. This sounds crazy, but just trust. Just trust me here, best friends. Okay, the people that you know, sometimes they're waiting. They're on the sideline. They're just kind of waiting. They want to see who's gonna rock with you. Like, are people gonna take this person serious? They're also waiting to see if you're gonna be consistent. Because let's just be honest. Some of you all start a different business every 30 days, okay? I think we all have that person that we follow and every 30 days they have a new thing, a new business, a new venture, a new hustle. And we just need to throw the noodles on the cabinet and see what sticks. And we need to stick with whatever sticks, right? So we think that the friends the people we know, you know, those are going to be the people that support us and blow our businesses up. And yes, let me just say this. I have a group of friends that always support me. I love them. Shout out to my best friends. I love y'all. And then I have my best friends <laughs> who are, you know, my supporters who always come through, who share. But let me just stress, it doesn't always work that way. And sometimes it's the people that you don't even know like that, that supports you much more than people that you've known for years. There have been people that have come along my journey and they didn't know me. You know, they just kind of found me online or they just kind of showed up to an event and we connected. Let me just, I can't believe it's here to say, let me just say, those have been the people who have rapped about my business, who have supported me, who have put my name in rooms, who have introduced me to some of the most amazing people. I cannot believe it to this day. It's like, man, this person was a stranger. And now this person is someone special in my life who believes in my vision, who motivates me, who's had my back, who sometimes believes in what you're doing more than you. Okay, that, that sounds crazy. And y'all are probably like, what? But let me just tell you this. God does some crazy stuff. You will look up and he will bring people in your life that want you to win more than you may even want to win. People who believe in your vision more 
then you believe in your vision. I feel like that about my team. Like there is this person that works with me and she drives me crazy sometimes, but she really wants the best for me. Like she's always pushing me when I'm getting off of my game, when I'm getting lazy, she's calling me. She is like the Colonel. Like I call her the Colonel. Her name is Shannon. Okay. And she holds me to such a high standard. And sometimes I'm like, sis, like I'm not even holding myself to the standard right now. Like, can you just let me give up today? Like, can you just let me crawl up in the bed, sleep until 11 o'clock, um, not call my phone, but she will push me so hard. And God will send those kind of people in your life. And I want to stress to you guys, like, take to those people. Give those people a chance. Let those people in, all right? Because sometimes you won't be motivated in entrepreneurship. And we were talking about the process, you know? Like, that was where we were going with this. But the process is not often talked about. There were times where I launched things and products. You guys know I have, you know, a beauty brand as well. And no one really checked for it like that. The product that I was so ecstatic about and I thought everyone would love, it was very mediocre, right? It came out and people were like, yeah, it's cute. You know, got a few orders, but it didn't take off the way that I expected it to take off. So here's what I'm going to say, best friends, the process you know, I used to focus on the outcome. Now I focus more on the process, more on the journey. And believe it or not, after 13 years of entrepreneurship, I literally sit down and I write out, okay, all the stuff that went wrong. You know, let's make a list. Let's make a list. What did I do wrong? What could I have done better? Okay. What worked and what did not work? Write this out for yourself, your life, your business, and your brand. And then what you realize is that there is so much more value in the process and in the journey than there is the outcome, right? Because the outcome, we look at that as the finish line. And baby, once you get to the finish line, some of us, we aren't open to learning new things. But when you're still on the process, when you're still learning, when you're still growing, when you're, when you're still building you show up a little different, right? You start to think about the things that you could have done differently. You start to think about the partnerships um, that you got into, you know, the things that you got out of, right? You start to think about the businesses that you started. You start to think about the products that you thought that people would be feeling and they just weren't feeling it like that. So really take more time to document the journey and focus on the journey, you guys. Let me just say this. Focus on the journey versus the outcome, all right? So let's go to our next question. Love these questions, by the way. Thank you all for sending them. Our next question is from um, Naomi Raymond. She said, how did you find your purpose to start your business? If there is one question that I get more than any question, it would be how to find your purpose. I am asked this question so many times, right? And my response to this question is that you don't find your purpose. Your purpose will find you. Let me say that one more time. You don't find your purpose. Your purpose will find you, okay? And what does this mean? You know how I found my purpose? I didn't find it. It found me. But the, but the way it found me was through serving other people. And that doesn't sound as fancy and smancy and glamorous as so many of us think that it should sound because we don't show up in that boss leader position. But I literally found my purpose through serving. And as I helped other people, as I served people, as I helped people find solutions to their problems, I became aware of what I was supposed to be doing. I became aware of my calling. I became aware of my gift. 
And the way I knew it was my gift is because when you are operating in your purpose and when you are doing the things that you are supposed to do, you flourish. Not only do you flourish, but people start talking about your gift. People start not just telling you that you're amazing at something. They start telling other people about what you're doing, about what you've done for them, how great you are. It's like people start marketing you. You know how we were talking about, you know, getting your friends to promote your business, getting your friends to support your business. When you are good at something and you are making an impact and you are finding solutions to people's problems, you are not going to be able to get these people to stop talking about you. They are going to want to tell everybody about what you have going on. So what I will say is start serving. Start serving in the areas that you feel like you're good at. And you will begin to see exactly what you're good at through that servantship. And people will start to give you feedback. I found my purpose through just working with people. And then when I first started, this is crazy, y'all. But I was working for people for free. I just wanted to help them get their ideas together, right? I wanted to help them really grow the, the small idea into something amazing. I would help them strategize and come up with their brand names and come up with their services and their pricing and how they would sell it and the problems they would solve. And I would just literally do that off the top of my head. Okay, the top of my head and it just rolled off of my tongue. And then one day I remember doing this and it was a really successful guy named Okra that I was working with. And I was working with his company and he said, you are really good at this. He said, one day when you grow up, because I was really young then, he's like, one day when you grow up and you realize who you are, he said, you're going to learn that what you're doing here is called consulting and you're going to make a lot of money doing this, right? So once again, people were reaffirming that I was good at something and I wasn't charging, right? And this is what I always stress to you guys. When you are doing something that you love, you know that you're in your purpose because you can do it with this level of energy, with this level of interest, right? You just throw things out there. It's not forced. You don't feel ran down. You don't feel pressured. Um, you aren't experiencing that imposter syndrome. I'm 100% confident in my purpose because there is a level of confidence that I get when I'm operating in it. I'm reassured through the customer satisfaction. I'm reassured through the transformation. Um, I'm reassured through seeing my customers grow and flourish. So yes, you know, the purpose is going to be discovered, but you don't have to go searching for it. What I will say is like, serve your way into your purpose. Serve your way into your purpose. All right. Next question is kind of similar. It's from um, Diamond Lee Inspirations on Instagram. Thank you for watching, Diamond. Your question is, how do you know that you are doing the assignment that God called and created you to do? Similar questions. You know, what I really also want to stress is that isn't it crazy how we are all kind of in the same spaces? Sometimes we we all have some of the same thoughts as we are going through this journey called life, right? We're all trying to figure out where am I supposed to be? You know, what am I supposed to be doing? Um, what is my full potential, right? What would my life look like if I make this decision? I feel like these questions are all so similar because you guys are all in a place where you want more. You're hungry, right? You have this desire. Your spirit is on fire and you want more out of life. And it's a beautiful thing. But the truth is, every part of the journey is your assignment. That's, that's that. I felt that one right there. Like every single part of the journey is your assignment. There is no one assignment, right? I believe that from the time you are born to the time we leave this earth, we are fulfilling the assignment. And the assignment is life. It's the different people that we come in contact with. Um, it's the different experiences that we go through. Um, it's the different lives that we impact along the way. You know, it's the relationships that don't work. 
Uh, it's the relationships that do work. It's the friendships that last a lifetime. Uh, it's those that show you who people truly are. I think that we are all doing what we are called to do by God. And I just think that once again, we have to really focus on the journey. And the question is like, you know, how do we know that we're on this assignment? The truth is the assignment changes as we evolve. The evolution, when we hear people talking about evolving, uh, it's a real thing. You know, I remember when I initially started my business, I thought that I wanted a hair salon. I wanted this product line. Um, and when I started it initially, I was not ready. I was not mentally ready. I wasn't financially ready. I was not spiritually ready. I needed to do some work on me. Okay. I needed to learn some things. I needed to go through some training. I needed some personal development. Best friends, I needed a lot. Okay. I needed a whole lot. <laughs> Let me just, let's just be honest. How many of us can just say like, I needed some work. And there's a reason why when I initially started these things, they didn't work out. I needed to go through that process to get to where I am today. But what we will realize is that we are always evolving and there is nothing wrong with that. And that evolution may also take us into having to make a, a change in our goals, having to make it a change in our business. And this is where so many of you all get afraid because you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to change. You know, people are going to think I'm all over the place. You know, what are people going to say? Well, there will come a time in your life and in your business, best friend, where you are going to have to pivot. I've had to pivot quite a few times and people thought I was absolutely crazy, right? I stopped doing some stuff and I tried some new things and it's because I was brave enough to continue to try to figure it out. So many of you all who are watching this right now, you are in a space in your life where you're trying to figure some stuff out. You may look up and say, you know, six months from now, what I was doing six months ago, that's not really what I wanna do. You know, everyone is trying to figure out what they're supposed to be doing, what they're supposed to be aiming for, right? The business that's supposed to be their forever business. And what I always tell my girl CEOs is that it's really not about what you're supposed to be doing right now. You need to focus on figuring out what you don't like to do. Because if you don't know what you don't enjoy, you won't know what you enjoy. The journey is really about figuring out what you don't want to do for 15 years. You know, I figured that out early on. I tell people all the time when it comes to administrative stuff, that is just not my lane. I'm a visionary, right? But I had to get into the administrative field to realize that's not what I wanted to do, right? I had to go work at a nine to five and um, I had to realize that my attention span was super short and that I could not sit in this space for hours and hours and hours without losing my mind. I needed to be free. I needed, I needed to be creative. You know, I needed my time. I needed the freedom. I needed sunlight. Um, it was the natural lighting that just energized me. So you have to go through that process and you got to figure out what you don't want to do. And as we go through life and we realize, okay, this is not what I'm good at, right? This is not my lane. This is not my cup of tea. We begin to grow into who we should be. We pivot multiple times. You guys, you will change. I don't see anyone who could sit back and say, who I was 15 years ago, I'm still that person. You're growing and changing every single day. So the assignment, Diamond, is knowing that the journey that you are on, Diamond, is exactly where you're supposed to be. You're on that journey and you're doing God's work by just going through that journey, right? Doing the things that you're doing, interacting with the people that you're supposed to interact with and developing as a person along the way. Okay, best friends. So we are shifting into our hot seat segment where our listeners and viewers get to ask me true or false questions. I'm nervous, but let's have some fun. <laughs> All right, first question, true or false? Being an entrepreneur is easy. Heck no. 
Being an entrepreneur is so hard. So that will 100% be false. <laughs> we got to talk about the moments that we cry in the car. If you've ever cried in the car, comment under this clip if you cried in the car. It is hard, very hard, especially when you are starting out by yourself. Starting a business by yourself is probably the hardest and craziest thing that I've ever done. So false. Next question. True or false, you need a loan? You do not need a loan. You need confidence, community, and consistency. Those are the three things that I would suggest you start off with. I'm just not that person that believes in jumping into that. So false, false, false. No, don't do it. I say I try to keep my overhead low. I try to keep my income flowing in on a consistent basis. And I kind of stay away from debt unless it's at a place where, you know, I need to hire employees because the business is just booming in that way. Or we need product because we're selling out so crazy that we can't even keep product in stock and we need to scale. Like it needs to be along those lines. I'm just not that girl that's going to say, go out here and get into credit card debt. So it's a no for me. False. All right, true or false, Ronnie, do you have to have a large following to start a business? False. Let me just say this. Some of the most successful people that I know who are making the craziest amounts of money, they don't have a big following. It's great to build your following along the journey, but the following isn't everything. Like the intimacy, the connection, the relationship that you have with your audience that is what matters. And as far as credibility goes, believe it or not, so many brands are starting to work with people who have smaller followings versus people who have these huge followings because most of the time they've done so many different ads and promos and paid things that their audience doesn't really trust them anymore. So they feel like people with smaller followings have more trust and a better connection with their followers. All right, true or false? Do you have to have a team to get started? That's false. I think um, initially you're going to start with your vision, your piece of paper. You're going to write it out. You're going to start taking action. It's going to be you and God, right? The goal is to eventually get a team, but you don't need the team to get it started, right? You need the team as you begin to grow and scale. I mean, you understand delegation and what having that team can do for your company, your brand overall. False. True or false, do I need a website for my business? What is the answer to that? I would say like a lot is changing right now. So I would probably say false because right now people are like shopping on Instagram. You know, people are doing direct shops directly from Instagram, Facebook, direct links. I mean, if you can't afford it, you can pretty much walk work your way around it you know but i suggest having a website let me make sure i, I stress this yes you you want to get one but hey if there's a will there's a way if you're a hustler you can definitely make it happen without it all right girl ceos i hope you enjoyed this episode of real talk with ronnie b be sure to like comment and subscribe and share this show with everyone you know and i'll see you guys next week bye it's the girl ceo show Run it up, always on the grind, you already know what's up.